The White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce and On Location TV19 are proud to present Your Business Matters, dedicated to your business needs. The White Bear Area Chamber is a nonprofit business organization serving as an advocate for the White Bear Area and its business community. Now here is the Executive Director of the White Bear Area Chamber and the host of Your Business Matters, Tom Snell. Welcome to the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce program, Your Business Matters, and my name is Tom Snell. I'm the Executive Director of the Chamber, and today as our guest, I'm pleased to have the District 1 County Commissioner, Mr. Blake Huffman. Thank you very much for coming out to our program today. Glad to be here, Tom. It's uh, always fun to uh, interact with the Chamber of Commerce folks. Wonderful. First of all, I'd like to ask you, uh, uh, what areas do you serve in the uh, northeast uh, suburbs here? Right. So I, I cover District 1, which is really Highway 96, if you think of it. It starts in Moundsview, uh, three of the four precincts mm -hmm. over in Moundsview, Arden Hills, Shoreview, Vadness Heights, North Oaks, White Bear Township, a little bit of Blaine and Spring Lake Park, and then uh, Gem Lake. Oh, as well. so it even goes into Anoka County a little well, bit. Well, the, uh, there's just a, a bit of both the Blaine and Spring Lake Park that actually is in Ramsey County. Ramsey County, County that's but right. But just a little sliver of oh, both okay, of those cities. All right. Okay. You know, I'd like to know a little bit too about your background before right. you got into the uh, political arena here running for uh, the uh, county board seat. What, what type of background do you have? Right. And first and foremost, and that's why I, uh, I love uh, talking and hanging out with the chamber folks, I'm a businessman. I, oh, you uh, are? I am. I uh, have been fortunate to be uh, an executive at two different banks, uh, most recently Wells Fargo in the mortgage area, a, a vice president of strategy. So I, I'm a businessman. I understand the uh, realities of businesses, the uh, challenges, certainly of the last uh, four or five years. Um, that you know that those challenges have hit the mortgage industry where I'm and, yep. uh, come from uh, more than or probably as much as anyone else uh, as, as any other industry. So I'm a businessman. Um, I've been able to to leverage that business experience with some political experience as well. And that is, I've served on the uh, Shoreview City Council up until uh, this election. So the last 16 years. Um, on Shoreview City Council, um, did some a lot of fun things there in Shoreview. And one of the things, just to connect it back into the business community, um, was the uh, the creator and then the uh, chair and the president until I uh, stepped down at, um, last month of the uh, Shoreview's Economic Development Authority. And okay. That, and that authority has been really uh, uh, was a key part of Shoreview uh, uh, growing business as it has. Mm hmm. You, you mentioned that uh, you have a business background, and obviously we think it's more important for business people to be engaged in the political process. And yeah. uh, do you have any ideas about that, how one goes about um, making that move and encouraging more business people to get involved in the uh, political process? Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's uh, you know, the how is the tough part, but it's critical. I mean, we yeah. see it at Washington for sure where where uh, you know two cents of common of common sense is not found anywhere. You know there's not one ounce of business thinking right. found uh, from either party. Quite frankly, at at the uh, federal level, quite often at the state level, we have that same mm -hmm. thing. There's not one thought of uh, how would how to make tough decisions, which mm -hmm. is something as businessmen mm -hmm. and women we make frequently. Uh, very little thinking of how do we plan for the future. How do we do things different? Things once again that every businessman and woman does probably multiple Absolutely. times a Absolutely. year. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And I, I think you mentioned something that I find really important. You mentioned that you started a program uh, with the uh, economic development uh, venues for mm -hmm. uh, the, the city of Shoreview. Right. And I want to find out, do you think that what you did in Shoreview with economic development initiatives, any of that can be transferred into uh, Ramsey County more effectively yeah. and some things that you think maybe that Ramsey County should be doing in the area of economic development that they currently are not involved with. Right. Well, great question. And, and the answer is yes. And let me uh, give you some details. Okay. So, so first of all, uh, economic development in the, in the, the suburban and, and even the, the city uh, environment here in, in, in Ramsey County is first and foremost done by the city. The city is the face of economic development right. and it should be and, and, and even as a county commissioner I totally support that the cities lead that direction. Because in both the, uh, I know both in White Bear and White Bear Township there are economic development uh, 
initiative or in groups. Absolutely, and and that's where you know that's just the, the closest to the folks. That's where uh -huh. you know the cities have tools that uh, the county doesn't. The city has TIF, for example, uh, which is, right. is certainly a, a a key tool in, in developing uh, business. So so we did that in Shoreview as a council member and as a president of the EDA. We used and the uh, EDA is the Economic Development Authority. Okay. Just want to make no, nope, yep. that's okay. good. Thanks. Yep. Um, we, we used our tools as a city to to uh, bring in. Um, a, a series of retail restaurants, Chipotle, Five Guys, Lian Chin, a few others. Mm -hmm. Trader Joe's is coming uh, to uh, to Shoreview. I saw, matter of fact, I was there last night. I or drove by it last night. I saw the the bulldozers are in the ground um, as we speak uh, there. So all that happened because of uh, economic development led by the city, you know, city staff and, mm -hmm. and, and the economic development, as well as uh, some uh, businesses that we were able to retain and, and grow rapidly in Shoreview. TSI and PAR Systems are two uh, large businesses that have high paying jobs and they are both uh, doing huge uh, expansions in Shoreview. Um, because we as an EDA and, and we as a city mm -hmm, had mm -hmm. made the decision we want to partner with them. And so there certainly is a role there from a city standpoint. Okay. And as you asked, the second part of your question is well, from county. a county perspective, <clears throat> yep. I'm working right now with county uh, staff to, to ask that very question. And we've already come up with a handful of d definite tools that we'll be able to present to cities saying, hey, cities, you're in charge of economic development, but we would like to be your partner. And we can do some things that you can't. We have some tools that you can't. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're not quite ready to release those yet, and maybe we'll come back and talk about okay. those on a later show. But there absolutely is a role to play there in economic development. And for those that are a little bit slower to say the county should jump into that, I, I uh, politely recommend or, or suggest that we've uh, we purchased about 427 acres in Arden Hills. Exactly. Uh, yep. Which which puts the county whether it should be or shouldn't be, exactly it's irrelevant. In we are yep. in the middle of economic. And we'll we'll get back to that in just a minute. Right. But I uh, mentioned that most jobs, from my understanding, are created by businesses that are already in the community. And right. I know that the chamber is really involved in a program called Grow Minnesota, yes. and we go yes. out and make visits to basically manufacturing firms to ask them what type of strategies they have. Are they planning to try to grow in our state or what are their future plans? And I was wondering if you have any any uh, contacts or any work that you've done in the past with companies to try to get them to expand like in uh, the area you mentioned. Absolutely, and, and I'll tell you, you know, in this new environment that we're in, cities and counties and other governmental yep. entities they need to play a role. You know, it's yep. not, it shouldn't be giveaways. It shouldn't be uh, taking the risk away from businesses, but it should be, what do we need to do to help you get here? Mm -hmm. and, and I'll tell you, in, in some of the Shoreview examples, it was, you know, we need better infrastructure. We need to make yep. a street wider. We need to um, put people in touch with other people. You know, it's it's things like that that, were, that are relatively easy, yep. but if you don't do them, they're not going to be there. And no. we, we retain yeah. business because of that. Now, I want to get back a little bit to the big site where the arms plant uh, or the arms... Right munitions area used to be over and uh, by the end of Highway 96, I remember uh, over 20 years ago, there was talk that it might become a big uh, a ski area. I right. think that that right. is now uh, yeah. kind of in the past. I can but, put that uh, the ski issue to bed. That's not going to okay, happen. Okay, so now. that won't happen. So what are some of the things that you think that area might be used for now that the county is heavily engaged in it? It won't be a Viking stadium. It uh, will not be a Viking stadium. Or the, the new home of the... Uh, uh, the St. Paul Saints, so... Uh, not uh, not by a long shot. So let me tell okay, you the yep. process, okay. uh, what's going on there. And so even before I was elected, yep. the, the county and the city of Arden Hills reached uh, an agreement that uh, created a, what's called a joint development authority. And that J JDA is what's going to guide the development of that property. And so the process right now is going on this way. Uh, we're waiting right now for congressional approval. Um, it, I'm told it's a formality. That'll come in late March or April to, uh, for, the con for Congress to officially sell the property to the county, which has all been agreed to. Um, that's step one. In the meanwhile, the citizens of Arden Hills and the leadership of Arden Hills are revising their, their master plan, and they've, there's been various iterations of them. Uh, and we'll talk more about the master plan in just a few minutes. That'll take about two years to get from beginning to end to have a, an approved master plan. In the meanwhile, the county, in, and it's, it's, it was off, the, the expense was offset by the, uh, the purchase of the land, the county is going through an extensive cleanup process of the property. Okay. Um, and and uh, I'm not a technical expert, but it's, it's going to cost 20 
five, twenty-six million dollars, and it's going to clean up every every inch of that property to residential standards. Um, it'll take two and a half years to do, so it's going to take quite a while. But that'll happen at the same time the city of Arden Hills mm -hmm. is doing their master plan. When that's all done, um, and the the city and the county have agreed to the master plan, the property is cleaned up. Then the fun begins, right? That's when the development happens. And conceptually, we all understand that it's going to be a mixed use of a property. Uh, it's going to be lots of commercial. Um, would be you know that previous the master tax plans, base in. absolutely. And if you think about it, it, it borders on the western side of that property. Board, borders mm -hmm. 35W, so it's perfect for. Uh, commercial type Absolutely, properties. Yeah, it really is. Um, you know, they'll certainly then as you kind of go east into the more uh, woodsy area and more remote areas, you'll find retail and you'll find some type of housing. The details, once again, will be tied to mm -hmm. this master plan, but it'll be mixed use um, and it'll be, uh, like I said, 427 acres. So it's as big. It is. Of, it's a huge area. You know, you, you can't, there's not a, uh, even remotely a property like that that's, you know, that's 20 minutes from both downtowns, 30 minutes from an airport great access, mm -hmm. um, et cetera. So, so there's, it's just, the upside is, is wonderful there. We have to make sure that we uh, clean up the property well so we give the developers uh, confidence mm -hmm. yep. in, in developing that property. Now, uh, on that, when do you think it'll be shovel ready? I mean, if you, uh, uh, it mm -hmm. seems like there are a lot of steps that one has to go through yeah. to get to that point. No. Uh, I mean, is this ten years, five years, two no, years? No, it, it'll be it'll be shovel ready in two and a half years. That's I, fast. I have great confidence in that. That's really fast. And and in the meanwhile, there's all this work that has to be done anyway. So we'll start meeting. Uh, the JDA has had one official meeting, uh -huh. um, and we'll meet monthly to to do the, the mundane process of you know uh, what's our insurance, making sure we have our financing group in place. We're going to go and uh, investigate a, other properties that have had similar uh, turnovers, you know, military bases. We want to understand mm -hmm. what, what those types of things have yep. happened. So, so we should have shovels in the ground building infrastructure, um, you know, in two and a half years. Okay. Now, the, the next question I want to ask is, uh, involves that site. Mm -hmm. uh, you bring in a lot more housing, a lot more commercial development. Uh, that area can get to be really congested, yeah. particularly in the early part of the morning and then the afternoon during the commute time period. Yeah. And what are some of the plans that uh, that Ramsey County has to deal right. with that whole issue of uh, congestion on Highway 96 that will result yeah. partially from the development of this new commercial no, area? Your, your question is a great one because transportation and that whole infrastructure is is critical um, to the long-term success, and that's what we're really focused on right now. So let me hit a handful of those points right now. So okay. first of all, if you think of Highway 96 and 35W, that bridge right now um, is failing in terms of the the, constru the the traffic doesn't flow at all. It's it's one, one side is is not metered. One side has stop signs, um, and we know by the way, just on the other side of the freeway is is New Brighton's uh, uh, Northwest Quadrant, which is is growing as well. So we're right now working with. Uh, the state legislature saying we need funds for you to make sure that mm -hmm. that you take care of the 30 okay. the, the bridge on the highway 96 and 35w access on county road h which is by the mermaid if you think of that and then yep. up on on the northern part of the property so lots of infrastructure happening there is going to be needed to, for a successful development and then as you mentioned on 96 unrelated to this project has been all the work that's happened right there on 694 and highway 10 and 96 has all been scheduled and so what's going on right now and and uh, literally, I believe it breaks ground later this year, is Highway 10 and 96, a significant redo of that intersection. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you can check with MnDOT's website to make sure we understand when all the roads will be closed. But there, Highway 96 will be shut down at that intersection mm -hmm. um, for a construction season while they build an overpass. So Highway 10 and uh, so all the lights will be removed mm -hmm. from that intersection. Yeah. That'll make th that along with what they're doing on 694 just uh, just south of there, um, over by Bethel uh, University yep. and Lexington Avenue, and as well as what we do on the freeway bridges uh, that I just referenced. That'll make that, that'll be critical for any new development that comes in, as well as you mentioned, Tom, it's it's a mess there for folks now, today, yep. let alone new development. So does, Matt, do, does the um, uh, Metropolitan, um, the, the people that do the road construction, I mean, are, are the state budget, the, the, the financing through the bonding, is it all set in place for 
MnDOT to, to do these things? Well, the 96 and 10 project is is 100% set okay. and, and uh, bulldozers are rolling uh, here in the next, you know, in 2013 okay. for sure. Everything else, the answer is no. And that's that's the part right now that, uh, you know, uh, Commissioner Ortega, who uh, is uh, chairman of the Ramsey County Commission's Commissioners, um, you know, he and other people are talking to state legislators, uh, senators and, and, and representatives to make sure that we do find funding for that. Okay. You know, we've, we've put, as I tell my residents, or residents, we put in money into that fund for years and we need, we need transportation. It's certainly the, one of the number one issues yeah. our citizens in the northern yeah. suburbs say is we need transportation. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure the businesses yeah. would agree. Yeah. Not a more generalized uh, question uh, dealing with Ramsey County. Mm -hmm. Do you see any potential cost savings in, uh, in government uh, in Ramsey County, maybe ways that government can run more efficiently, mm -hmm. uh, ways that we could uh, do some cost savings that would maybe not really dramatically impact uh, some of the services that we have? Well, it's, it's funny you ask that, Tom, because during the campaign, which is just you know f three, four months ago, that was certainly an issue that we talked a lot about. Okay. Um, Right now, on the average side, the average valued house uh, in the mid 200s, Ramsey County is the highest property tax of any county in the state. Um, highest in the state. Highest in the state, and and we know that's an issue. We know that's an issue yeah. for residents, and because those residents want to work uh, nearby, we know that certainly impacts uh, businesses. And so yeah. we're working on that right now. We don't have the specifics yet. We're still working on that, but we we have a whole series of things that we want to review to see: is it necessary? Is it uh, what's the value uh, of it? And is there some way we can do it um, more effectively by partnering with another county, another government entity? Um, private sector at, at times, but we absolutely, uh, one of our key goals here is going to be how do we do business and, and fulfill the, the need of government um, in a way that, uh, that, that is more cost effective. So because you, right you now might be a, looking at ways, for example, if there's a duplication of services between different uh, areas of government, maybe finding ways to uh, uh, collaborate and, and uh, bring those together so that uh, you yeah. can do things more yeah. effectively. Well, that's that certainly way. one example, and I think the other thing that <clears> we're <throat> thinking about is 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 trying to think of things differently. You know, just because we've done it this way for a while doesn't mean yeah. that that's the way it has to be done. Uh, I'm a real big fan as a businessman. Once again, every businessman and woman does this. Is what are best practices? What are other ways that yeah. we can go and find? Yep. You know, other counties have figured out things. You know, why is Anoka County have been able to lower their taxes the last two years? We don't know the answers, and it might be because their demographics are, are, are much different than ours. We, I don't know yet, but we're, that's yeah. what we're going to go and find out, is what, what are other counties doing, both local and, and far, farther yeah. away, and how can we replicate that? That's interesting. Now, uh, on, on some of the other things I've been reading uh, recently about uh, the issues related to uh, retirement uh, funding for mm -hmm. different uh, areas of government. Mm -hmm. Are is there any? Uh, is there anything that is going to be happening in that sp that vein? Do you think is that an issue that will affect taxpayers in Ramsey County? You know, uh, well, it's going to affect them in, in Ramsey County, but mainly from the state perspective. You know, um, so most a lot of our employees are in para. Okay. Um, and para is is as we've read in the newspaper tremendously underfunded. Right. But, but it's it's a state. Um, issue right now, okay, um, and the state has to to, to work with it. Although, um, as I talk with our finance director, it it has implications to the county. For example, if if our auditors think that it's an unfunded mandate, an unfunded, I'm sorry, liability, um, you know that that's going to have that could have implications on our bond ratings, as an example. Oh, it could. So, uh, well, yeah. it could, and, yeah. and that's what we need to understand uh, according to accounting uh, accounting uh, uh, rules. That could, and so that's a significant an issue for sure and it's it's something that's millions and millions of dollars it needs to be addressed at the state level um, okay. is where that needs to be addressed okay. now if somebody wants to get a hold of you how how would they go about right. doing that the uh, there's lots of easy ways to okay. do it uh, blakehuffman.com is is our blog website um, uh -huh. all our contact information is there as as well as if you want to just out to the county website it's there um, we are we the one thing we ran uh, aggressively on is talking to folks is that we want to communicate. So if you have questions, you have comments, uh, concerns, you have a way of doing something better than what's done now, reach out, give us a call. Our emails are, uh, my email is right there. Excellent. Um, and, and, you know, we're, we're active members of both uh, uh, of 
of all the chambers in my district, and yep. so we're uh, uh, looking forward to continue to working uh, real hard with the, the business okay. folks. Okay, and a uh, couple of telephone numbers that you might have. Sure, let me, I'm just, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you my cell phone number. Oh, and wow, that's okay. what I answer 24 hours a day, and that's 651-249-1732. 1732. Right. And I'll uh, let me add on to that my personal email, which is Blake Huffman at, at uh, Comcast.net. Okay. Um, so we're, we're serious about communicating and uh, responding to people. Uh, we do have a monthly newsletter that we uh, um, started uh, in February, and another one uh, is coming out here in March, actually, uh, uh, this week. Um, and so people can sign up for that email. Uh, newsletter just to understand mm -hmm. what's what's happening in the county um, and it's certainly broader than just business but we uh, with my focus and my experience we talk a lot about business uh, this week we talk uh, in the March edition we talk about some really neat business op uh, things that are happening in Arden Hills as an example Wonderful. and we'll Excellent. continue to expand that okay well thank you very much for this informative interview and appreciate you coming to the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce television program. Appreciate it. Thanks Thank for you. having me, Tom. Thank you. You've been watching Your Business Matters. For more information on this program or the White Bear Area Chamber, visit www.whitebearchamber.com or call 651-429-8593.